Hey guys, this is the What's What of Mrs. Edmonds Classroom, a guide on how to be successful in language arts and geography. If you want to follow along in the disclosure that you have, uh, you are welcome to do so. But if not, that's okay too. This will cover all of the highlights in the disclosure you've been given. First off, I just want to start with an introduction. It's so nice to meet you all. Some of you I know well, some of you this is the first time, but either way, I'm excited to get to know you all. Uh, this is a little bit about me. Um, I went to BYU. Uh, I'm big into sports. I played volleyball and basketball in high school. I played volleyball in college. I um, love football. My husband's a former football coach, so we're really big into football. We have season tickets at the University of Utah, which is kind of funny because I am not a U fan. I am a Y fan, uh, but <laughs> we do enjoy going to the games. Um, my family is the most important thing in my life. My husband and my cute little girl, Addison, she is two and spunky and fun. And yeah, she's just the light of our lives. Um, I really love to read. My favorite book of all time is To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, I've been a former, I've been a former, I am a former coach. I've coached volleyball and basketball, uh, both here at North Star, loved both. Um, I'm enjoying doing the family thing now. Uh, I'm originally from California, uh, Northern California specifically, right about there. I miss it, I miss the ocean, I miss the trees, but I do love the mountains in Utah. Uh, I love traveling. Uh, obviously I teach geography and so I enjoy learning about new places and going and experiencing new cultures and new landscapes. Uh, I've been lots of cool places. If you look at the back wall behind my desk, you'll see a map of all the places I've been. Uh, love it. It's my favorite. Um, this whole COVID thing is actually really rough because we had a whole bunch of trips get canceled uh, and that was super sad. Um, if we're not going someplace uh, fancy or, or far away, we actually do love to road trip. Uh, just getting in the car and packing up and taking off is, is just so enjoyable for us. We get to you know, listen to music and eat car treats and just talk and and it's just really fun to to see our country by car. Um, speaking of, I am extremely patriotic. Um, I graduated from BYU in political science and so I'm very much uh, invested and involved in the political uh, structures of our country and our community. I like to know what's going on. <laughs> I generally have an opinion, an opinion about everything. Uh, so if you want to get into a discussion with me, you are welcome to engage. But uh, I also <laughs> am a former college debater. And uh, if you want to argue with me, you better bring your A-game. Uh, this, for those of you who don't know, which is probably most of you, those of you who do, good on you. This is called an able skiver skillet. Uh, it makes round kind of spherical pancake type balls. Uh, that is a standard breakfast in Denmark. Uh, I'm Danish. I have a lot of uh, Danish heritage and Danish culture in my family. And so uh, the Abel Skiver skillet sort of represents that ancestry. Music notes, I play the piano, um, have played for years. Uh, it's a big part of my life. And then of course, down here, the teacher apple i do love to teach i love you guys i love being able to uh, teach you and experience things with you and talk about things with you and and watch you grow and learn it's just a really a really big joy for my life and then finally this is a picture of the draper temple i am lds um, and my husband and i were married in the draper temple so there you have it that's a little bit about me uh, hopefully I will get to know a lot about each of you as well. <clears throat> Let's get into our actual disclosure. So first and foremost, how to survive in my class. 
Number one, do not panic. It won't be okay. Um, it's, it can be overwhelming. Uh, some of you really like the class that you're coming into that I'm teaching. Some of you maybe not so much. Uh, some of you are maybe new to the school or uh, you've never had me before as a teacher and you don't quite know what to expect, but it's okay. <clears throat> we'll get through it together. So first and foremost, don't panic. Um, the second thing is, well, the rest of these pictures sort of uh, introduce different tips that I'm going to offer you. The first one is this idea of time. Um, you will have some time in class to work, work on homework, work on reading, um, do projects or whatever it is. If you use the time you're given, you probably won't have a whole ton of homework. Uh, the one exception of that is AP. Sorry, you guys, you were going to have homework whether you use the time in class or not. Um, but the rest of you really like use the time you're given. Don't screw around. Don't talk to your friend. Don't, you know, sleep. Just if you have 20 minutes to work on something, use that 20 minutes to actually work on it. Um, the second thing here is to follow the rules. The rules are pretty basic. We'll go over them in a minute, but it's just, it's so much easier if you guys as a student or as a group of students decide to make things easier on yourselves rather than harder. If you don't follow the rules, then you make it hard for you to learn. You make it hard for everybody else to learn and you make Mrs. Edmund grumpy. So follow the rules. Third picture, um, do your work. Pretty much easy. Just you, I don't even know what to say beyond that, but some of you have such a hard time with this. If you're given work to do, do it and turn it in on time. Uh, don't get behind, especially my AP kids do not get behind. Um, it becomes really, really hard to get caught up if you get behind. So just stay on top of your work and turn in everything and we won't have a problem. Right here, do the reading. Whether you're reading a book for my language arts class or you're reading um, different selections for geography, <clears throat> you need to do the reading. I don't assign it if I don't think it's important. And so if you have been given that assignment, it's because I actually do want you to do it and you are expected to accomplish that. This one, be ready, come prepared with everything you need. Um, we'll talk more about some of the things that I'm putting in place to help you be prepared. Um, but please make sure when you come to class, you have the things that you need to, to work. Pencil, paper, your Chromebook. Yeah, just come with what you need. Um, this one is a big one for me. I'm going to put a big star on it. I, I was always a student who was kind of shy and kind of quiet. And I, but I was also pretty, pretty smart. Like I knew stuff. I felt comfortable most of the time in all of my classes, but every once in a while, something came up where I wasn't quite sure what to do, or I didn't understand a concept, but I was always so nervous and reticent to ask for help because I was worried that if I raised my hand, everyone would be looking at me and they would judge me and, you know, be think that I was stupid because I didn't know it or whatever. It's just not the case, you guys. <laughs> um, please do not follow in my footsteps in that regard. If you have a question, it is a pretty high probability that you are not the only one with that question. So please just have a little bit of extra courage and raise your hand and ask the question. If you are just super shy and super nervous about speaking out in class, um, First of all, we're gonna break you of that habit. But secondly, you can come after, like stay for a minute after class or come after school for a minute or um, pop your head in during advisory or whatever. You can find some additional time somewhere else to come talk to me in private. That is totally fine as well. You can also always shoot me an email. This one, this lovely bright shining sun, um, come with a positive attitude. Uh, don't be grumpy, don't be pissy, don't be <laughs> off task. Um, come ready to work, come ready to learn. Uh, this, 
I know many of you are very excited to start the school year this year, and I think that's awesome and wonderful, and I'm excited to have you here. And I want that excitement to permeate into what we do in class. So, you know, turn that frown upside down. Come ready to work, and if you are grumpy or sad, I will do my best to cheer you up. And if you want me to leave you alone, just tell me, but still try to have a positive attitude. And then lastly, um, you'll probably hear more about this in advisory a lot, but use your planner. We give it to you to help you stay organized, to help you stay on top of what you've got going on. Uh, if you use it and you are religious about using it, then you're going to be much more successful. Uh, people who are organized tend to have a much easier time of things. So make it a goal to stay organized this year. Pretty easy, pretty standard. Um, so hopefully we can implement all of these survival tips as we begin this year. Next up, supplies. It's pretty basic. I'm not asking for much. Um, first and foremost, big star you have to have your Chromebook and it has to be charged. Um, please just get in the habit of plugging your Chromebook in at night when you go to bed and remembering to grab it in the morning when you leave. It is so important that you come ready to work with supplies that will get you there. Um, and the most important one is your Chromebook. Uh, especially, you know, who knows if we will end up going to a hybrid version or going to an online version at some point this school year. And so you need to be aware of what we're doing in class using the Chromebook uh, so that you can easily transition to at home if we have to go there. Um, beyond your Chromebook, your charged Chromebook, mind you, uh, pencil, paper, and your planner. That's really it. Um, there may be additional things that I ask for, but we'll talk about that in a second. Speaking of, here they are. These are all signs that you will see up on my door. If you look at my door right now, you will see uh, numbers hanging at the top with ADV at the end. Uh, the numbers are either blue or green or uh, yellow, depending on what period I have you. Um, those represent your period numbers underneath. You may or may not see signs hanging up depending on if they if you had something special to bring to class today. Um, but this is what is sort of like my message board to you. This is where I will communicate the things that you need to bring to class. Um, it could say something like bring your textbook or bring the book we're reading together, like for language arts. Um, it might say something like bring your art supplies if uh, we're doing a project. Um, it's a little tricky this year because all of my community supplies that I've always used in the past, you know, my supply of colored pencils and glue sticks and markers and scissors and all that stuff, we're not allowed to use those this year because of COVID. And so you guys are sort of responsible for having those things yourselves. Uh, and every once in a while, I will need you to bring them with you. Um, bring headphones. <laughs> this one, you can kind of see it. Um, and you're probably familiar with Mr. Fernley's version of it, but uh, we do do iReady in language arts. And if it's an iReady day, it will say that. Um, that will be one of the signs that are hanging up under your period, okay? It's also important for you to pay attention to the signs when you're at your lockers. So, you know, we're asking you to get all of your supplies for first and second period at the same time, all of your supplies for third, fourth, and advisory at the same time. And so, you know, if you don't have my class next, you might not necessarily know what it is you need to bring with you. That's where these signs come in. So you will know what you need to grab in order to be prepared, okay? All right, let's talk about the rules. <clears throat> Uh, talking about bringing your supplies with you fits perfectly into rule number one, which is to be ready. You have all of your supplies. Your work is done. You have a positive attitude and you come ready to work. Okay, that's really it. Uh, it's not, it's not, 
you know, this nebulous concept where you just aren't sure. Come with the stuff that you need and come with the attitude that you need in order to work and be successful in my class that day. Number two, be respectful. Um, this is a, this is a really big one for me at all times. Okay. Be polite to everybody, polite to me, polite to your peers, um, polite to the furniture, polite to the, the, you know, your school supplies, your books, whatever, be polite, um, use them appropriately, use them as they are intended, uh, as far as like furniture and school supplies goes. Um, if, I mean, you guys just get more if you are nice. If you're pissy or mean or selfish or entitled, I'm not going to respond very well to you and your peers aren't either. And so if you're just polite, um, polite here, kind here, you're just gonna have an easier time of things all the way across, okay? And then don't interrupt. That, <laughs> that is a big one for me. If I'm talking, you should not be. If you're talking, your peers should not be. I should not be, okay? Uh, we have class discussions a lot in class, and so learning to take turns, learning to be respectful when each other are speaking is a big one. Um, you guys are eighth graders. You, sh you know, we shouldn't have to have this conversation, and yet I do every single year. So be polite, don't interrupt, and always, 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 always be kind. And then the last one, pretty easy, be responsible. Use your time wisely, right? Going back to one of those survival tips that I gave you at the very beginning. If, you've, if you're given time to work, actually use that time to work. Um, follow directions. If you need help, ask for help. Um, either, you know, in whatever setting you feel comfortable. And this is, this is our new one for this year. You always have to wear a mask. If you are in my classroom, without exception, you have a mask on. All right, now, <clears throat> participation. Participation is huge in my classroom. We have lots of formal discussions. We have lots of informal discussions. We have something called Socratic seminars, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, you have to talk during these discussions. If you don't, you will not do well. Um, participation for every single one of my classes is worth 15% of your grade. That means if you don't participate, the highest possible grade you can get is an 85%, which is a B. So if you want an A, you have to participate. You have to talk during these discussions. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not an unknown. I'll let you know ahead of time what the requirements are, what the stipulations are for the discussion, so you know what you need to do in order to meet your participation requirement. But if you don't do it, you lose points, okay? <clears throat> da, 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 da. All right, grading. Um, this tends to be one of the favorite things students like about my class. You can always, 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 always fix your grade. You can retake, redo, turn in missing, whatever, always always, always, everything can be fixed, okay? If you have to redo a paper five or six times to get the grade that you want, you can. Um, if you need to retake a test two or three times to get the grade you want, you can. That is fine. Um, my ultimate goal is for you to master the content. And if you um, don't get there the first time around, it's okay for you to go back and redo it. I want you to learn it. I want you to show that you know it. Uh, and so however long that takes is fine with me. I do not deduct late points, okay? If you turn in work late, you will still, you could still potentially earn full credit if you, if you did what you were supposed to, okay? You can turn in everything for full points until the last day of the quarter. Um, the last day of the quarter is kind of a hard and fast date because that's the day I have to turn grades in. <laughs> and so I have to cut, I mean, I have to cut it off somewhere, right? But you have until the last day of the quarter to turn your work in every time, okay? 
However, because you can always fix your grade and because I don't deduct late points, I do not round grades. If you end up with an 89.8999 percentage, you're gonna get a B plus. I will not round it up to an A minus. If you end up with a 92.96, I, you're gonna get an A minus. I will not round it up to an A, okay? If you put the time in to get your points, then you'll, you'll get what you earn, okay? Um, as long as you come in ahead of time, redo some stuff, turn in some stuff to get a few more points, those will get put in and you will get the grade that you want. Um, but don't assume that because you're close that I'm gonna give it to you because I will not, okay? Plagiarism and cheating. Oh, every year, you guys, every stinking year, I have this issue. Um, just don't do it. You can redo and retake and turn in late work all for full points all the way until the end of the quarter. There's absolutely no reason for you to plagiarize something or to cheat. Um, Last year, I had some students who worked together, right? I, that's in heavy quotation marks, worked together on an assignment. And really what happened was, okay, you do number one and you do number two and you do number three and then we'll copy each other's answers. That's what happened. And so they turned in exactly the same assignment. That's cheating, you guys. That is not um, acceptable or appropriate. That is called cheating. Now, if you want to work together, that's fine. In fact, a lot of times I will allow you to work together, but working together looks more like, okay, here's number one. Um, this is the question. Well, I think it's this and I think it's this and some, you know, the third person in your group thinks it's this. Um, this is why I think it's this. This is why I think it's this. Okay, well, let's refer back to our book and see what it says. Okay, and what do we think? okay, we've come to a conclusion, this is what we think, and now I'm going to write that down in my own words. Okay, and then you go on to the next one. That's what working together looks like. Working together is not, you take this part, I do this part, and then we'll switch and trade and copy. That's not working together, that's cheating. Don't do that. Um, if you do it, this is your one and only warning, okay? If you do it, if I find that you have been copying each other's papers, or, heaven forbid, if I find that you have been cheating on a test or plagiarizing from any source um, on a paper or other assignment, it's an automatic zero, big fat zero. It's a call home and it's a meeting with Mrs. Archer. You don't want that. I don't want that. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable for all of us. So just don't do it. Okay? Good. Next up, help. Labs and Canvas are your two biggest sources. Uh, this year, because of some COVID concerns, um, we are going to give it a shot to hold labs virtually. Okay? What that means is on Wednesdays and Thursdays from three o'clock to four o'clock, I will be available via Google Meet. Um, and if you have a question or a comment or a concern, you are welcome, uh, or you need help, obviously. <laughs> you are welcome to just jump on Google Meet, uh, put in my Google Meet meeting nickname, which is always Diet Pepsi. If you need to get access Mrs. Edmund on Google Meet, Diet Pepsi is your nickname. Uh, and then we will work together via Google Meet, okay? Um, if by chance of you don't think a virtual lab is going to work for you, you are welcome to come talk to me and we will see if we can set up an in-person lab appointment, okay? But until further notice, 
all of my labs will be virtually, okay? Also, Canvas is another great resource. Um, you can access your work, you can turn in assignments, you can watch lessons. My goal this year is to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of your work done through Canvas. Um, some of it just, it's just not a good medium to try to take something that I've been doing in person, like hard copy and transfer it into electronic. And so please just um, use Canvas to turn in work, um, but just FYI that that's a really good resource. All right, guys, I know this is an uncomfortable subject. I know we don't want it to be the case, but we've got to talk about COVID and how it affects us here at school. Safety steps. Number one, always, 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 always wear a mask. If you are in my classroom, you have a mask on. That is non-negotiable. It stays on the entire time you're in my room. Uh, whether you're talking or listening or whatever it is you're doing, you have a mask on. Uh, if you take it off, I'm going to send you to the office. Like it really is that simple. Um, my family is a high risk family and I'm just not taking any chances. Number two, wash and sanitize your hands often. When you come into my room, the sanitizer's right there on the table. Get yourself a squirt and head to your desk. Um, always wash your hands before and after you eat. Sanitize if you're coming into contact with different things. Make sure you just keep your hands as clean as possible. Maintain physical distance. Obviously in a classroom with 25 kids in it, six feet apart is not possible. So we are as far apart as we can get. Um, and as you walk down the hallway, try to stay out of other people's ways, try to keep to yourself. Um, envision this kind of bubble around yourself of personal space and stick to it as much as possible. Number four, limit the contact that you have with items that are not yours, as well as with people that you don't associate with on a regular basis. Number five, don't share. If somebody asks you for a pencil, say no. If someone asks to borrow your lip gloss, say no. If someone asks to borrow your brush or your scissors or your pencil sharpener or whatever it may be, the answer is no. Your items are your items only. Do not share your stuff with others and don't ask others for their stuff. And number six, and this is a huge, huge, huge one because I know we are all um, guilty of this at some point in time, do not come to school if you are sick. If you have symptoms of anything, stay home. Now let's talk about what those symptoms are, specifically symptoms that relate directly to COVID. The first one is cough. A specifically a dry cough, um, but it doesn't have to be. The second one is a fever of 100.4 or more. Okay, 100.4, this is Fahrenheit. If you're a Celsius kind of person, it's 38. If you have a temperature of 38 or higher, um, you're too sick to come to school, stay home. This one represents uh, trouble breathing, shortness of breath or trouble breathing in any way. This one is sore throat. If you have a sore throat, this one is muscle aches or pains. Um, now, someone's, someone asked me what muscle aches and pains mean. Um, essentially, it's like, um, you know, if you work out really hard and you're sore, it's like that, but without actually having done the workout. Uh, if your legs or your arms feel heavy or excessively tired or it just takes too much effort to even just stand up or walk across the room, that's what that means. Um, a loss of taste or smell is a, is a really big symptom of this particular um, coronavirus. Uh, so pay attention to that if, it's, if you have a new loss of taste or smell. Uh, this one is nausea. If you are nauseous, um, and that could just be you feel like you're going to throw up, but you don't ever actually throw up, okay? However, vomiting and diarrhea are both symptoms as well. So, but they don't have to go together, right? You could 
you could vomit without feeling nauseous ahead of time. You could feel nauseous and never actually throw up. Uh, so it's kind of tricky. The symptoms are kind of all over the place. But ultimately, if you feel like something's off, stay home. When you enter the classroom, things are gonna be a little bit different. Number one, I'm gonna just harp on this all the time, wear your mask. Make sure you have your mask on before you walk through my door. Number two, make sure you have your things for two class periods. Uh, we're trying to limit the amount of time you guys spend in the hall and the amount of time you're at your locker. And so um, you're going to go to your locker before school and when you go before school, you are going to get your items for first and second periods. This again is when looking at my door to see what you need for the period that you have me is gonna be um, helpful, okay? My door will always be open. You'll be able to see it from the hallway. Uh, so just check my door to see what you're gonna need. Uh, after lunch, you will get your stuff for third, fourth, and advisory. Make sure, again, if you have me after lunch, check, check my door to see what you need to bring or to see what we're doing that day, which will help you know what to bring. Number three, sanitize your hands on the way into the room. Always. The hand sanitizer is right there at the door on the table. Uh, just give yourself a little pump. Sanitize your hands. Um, sharpen your pencil before you sit down if you need to. Uh, and then report directly to your assigned desk. This is not where, oh, my friend sits across the room, so I'm gonna go hang out at her desk until the bell rings. That's not what this is, okay? As soon as you enter my room, you sanitize your hands, you sharpen your pencil if you need to, and then you go to your own desk. Um, unfortunately, because of all of these COVID procedures and restrictions that are being put in place, we really do need you to just follow these rules and keep to these procedures. I know it's not ideal, I know it's not fun, but it is what it is. This is my plea with you. Please, 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 please. It is so important to please take this COVID-19 thing seriously. Uh, my family is a high-risk family and it, it makes me really nervous. Uh, all of these potential contacts and so I need you guys to follow the rules. If you are coming into contact either with my classroom or with me directly, you will follow the rules 100% of the time. Okay, there are just no exceptions. All right, that's it. We walked through my disclosure. We talked about COVID. Does anybody have any questions? Let's just open it up.